welcome to this video. My name is Maximilian from the giant world of tiny things. You can find us on Facebook and today's video is going to be about a method that allows you to work your way around the very limited depth of field of macro photography. Now this technique is called focus stacking. You might have heard about it before but if not here's a brief summary. Focus stacking is a technique where you mount your camera traditionally on a tripod and then you're taking a stack of images at slightly different focusing distances which you then combine in post-processing into one overall super sharp image. Now this sounds a little more complicated than it is. Basically you just use a focus slider to mount your camera on the tripod. This allows you to turn a little gear and shift focus ever so slightly between shots. Ideally you'll use an intervalometer or a remote control to avoid handshake when you apply pressure to the camera by pressing the shutter button and um, another couple things to be aware of when you perform a focus stack is to make sure you've got full batteries inside your flash and the camera <laughs> there's nothing more frustrating than having to interrupt the stack hang on my little butterfly friend just fell down there we go say hi to my little pet friend he just fell off the window board, he can't fly, he had a problem when he hatched, so I took him inside and I'm feeding him honey every now and then. And sometimes he falls down from where I put him because he can't fly very well, <laughs> he only flies down and once he reaches the ground level he can't make his way up. Anyway, let me get back to focus stacking. Now when you perform a focus stack it's important to have fresh batteries inside your camera and your flash because otherwise you'll have to interrupt your stack make sure you've got full batteries, uh, an empty SD card so you don't have to format or change SD cards in the middle of your stack. For now let's just have a look at the scene quickly. I've got a backdrop here which is just glitter paper just to add some color to the scene. Um, a young ivy plant which I figured would make a nice subject and a suitable one too in terms of size. I put a little snail shell on top of it to illustrate the effect a little better. Um, I'll show you a video of how thin the depth of field is right now. And this is why we need focus stacking. The lens that I'm using is a manual 28mm lens on reverse. I'll be using my ring flash, a Canon 5D Mark II. Um, the aperture that I'm using is f8 because the lens is the sharpest at f8. And um, now just let me put that little body of mine on the flower again and we'll start shooting. Alright, so I'm going to go into live view to see what I'm doing here. And uh, to make sure that I really got the focus where I need it. And when you start your stack it's very recommendable that you start a little bit past where you think is the edge of your subject because sometimes your eye is just going to fool you and if you miss the very last sliver of focus you won't be able to use the stack and that's a real bummer. Now, also important is that you adjust your tripod and your camera while you're on the very rear of your focusing zone because otherwise you might just have the subject too close to an edge and then you move your camera into the scene and you realize that you cropped off a part of your subject and that would suck as well. Okay, oh, this is hard to adjust with the focusing slider. There we go, that is ideal. Okay, now let's start shooting. And ideally you sit down, you take a stable physical position and you don't even take your hand off the little focusing gear of your focus slider because every time you touch it you're going to change around the composition a little bit as well. And that should be it. Oh, and that's good because I just moved the tripod with the leg of my chair. Anyway, now I overshot my subject as I mentioned before. I took a smaller step size than I probably need and I also shot way beyond my subject to just make sure that my eye does not trick me and I have the very front to the very end of that snail shell and I'm not missing a piece. Now in the next step we're going to transfer these files onto my computer and then I show you how to merge them in Photoshop automatically. 
Cheers. Alright, time for some post-processing. And as you can see, I'm in Adobe Bridge already and I selected all the files that I need. What I also did before I started filming is to convert my RAWs into JPEGs. This just makes sure that the process is quicker by a bit because RAW files are much bigger than JPEGs. So this is going to speed up the process and be easy on your computer. And it's also recommendable because you can optimize and develop your RAWs before you load them into Photoshop and that way it just preserves more image quality. Because once you've got the files in Photoshop it's all pixel based and changes you make to the white balance, sharpening, saturation and whatever will just affect the image quality much more than with a RAW file. So let's go ahead, open up Photoshop and start stacking. Now the way to load a stack into Photoshop is quite easy. You go into the files menu, go on to scripts and then load files into stack. Now we're going to load all the images that I've just shown you in Adobe Bridge and we'll wait for Photoshop to load them. Once they're all loaded, make sure that you check this little box right here, the upper box of the two, attempt to automatically align source images. And if you don't check that box, you'll see that you might have a few minor changes of perspective in your stack just due to movement or whatever might have happened. And this will just mess up the stack and the automatic stacking function of Photoshop. Now if you check that little box, Photoshop is going to make up for those minor shifts in perspective and just make sure that all the images are aligned and that they have the same scale of your subject. Now you'll see what I mean in just a second. And here you see exactly what I'm talking about. You see how Photoshop scaled down some of the images step by step? This is because in some images our camera was closer to the subject than in others. Now Photoshop makes sure that the subject is perfectly aligned and of same size in all your shots. And this way we can go ahead to the next step and use Photoshop's automated stacking function. But this is not always 100% reliable, so before we do that, we're going to create a safety net for ourselves. The way to do this is to select all the layers that you've got in your document and then just click on the little folder emblem in the lower right corner of Photoshop. This way all your layers are going to be put into a folder which we're then going to duplicate. And this way we create a safety net for ourselves just in case Photoshop messes up some bits of the final composition because then we can go ahead and use the layers that Photoshop hasn't touched yet to paint in bit by bit those little bits that Photoshop messed up. On to the next step. The way to automatically blend these layers is to go into the edit tab of Photoshop and then click on auto blend layers. Once the little auto blend window pops up, make sure that you select seamless tones and colors and if you have enough horsepower in your computer, you can also select content aware fill. And here's our result. Now as you see, Photoshop did a really good job merging these layers together, but as we zoom in, you will see that Photoshop also did what I expected it to do. It found a hair in the foreground that overlaid the snail shell and decided that this little hair probably contributes a lot more to our composition than the actual subject. Now there's no fault at Photoshop because it doesn't know what's our subject and what not, but this is exactly why we created this backup folder right here. Now let's zoom out quickly and activate this backup folder. And with all layers deactivated, we're going to blend in layer by layer and we will check if there is actually a bit that Photoshop missed sharp in this layer and once we find such a layer we're going to put a black layer mask over it and then just erase that little part where we can correct what Photoshop did and there we are here it begins where you can see that it's actually sharp and what we're going to do now is to create a black layer mask so this all disappears and we're going to use an eraser a small eraser and then just get rid of this hair and you see we can just paint it out and once it starts to become blurry on the edge of our mask then we will activate the next layer and do the same thing over. Put a black layer mask on and then just erase that layer mask exactly where we need it. Now I'm going to fast forward this process and then I'll see you in just a moment with the final image.
And then it's going to look like this. Quite amazing, right? Photoshop did a really good job here. And I'm going to zoom in to just show you how sharp it is. And as you can see, focus stacking in Photoshop works really well. Now I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed the content. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more videos like this. It really supports this channel and it helps me to stay motivated and produce more content like this. Now my next video is going to be about handheld focus stacking and I'll show you how to perform a handheld focus stack and do that in Photoshop as well. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Cheers!